Hello guys. Welcome to Alaska Raft Connection and the Alaska Bush Rafter channel here on YouTube. I'm Brian. I'm an outfitter and wilderness river guide here in Alaska. I specialize in whitewater and fishing trips uh, that are fly out destinations in the remote parts of Alaska. And today I want to share a uh, relatively new knife for me. Uh, I picked this up around the American Thanksgiving time and have been playing with it for the last couple of months and uh, or I should say month and uh, I got two knives at the time actually and both were from Mora in their outdoor segment. I picked up the Mora Garberg uh, during the Amazon special at about $55 so I couldn't pass that up and also I picked up the Mora Eldris and the Eldris uh, a lot of questions uh, concerning this knife, a lot of interest concerning this knife. It's uh, a very, it's the smallest knife within the specialized outdoor segments of, uh, of Mora. So it's not a necessarily a carving blade, it's not a hunting blade. It is in the sort of all-purpose, all-arounder outdoor knife. However, it is in the miniature part of that series. So. Uh, it is about zero degrees, light snowfall here. I'm actually dressed up, it seems like, for uh, Arctic survival or uh, working in the oil patch on the North Slope. And actually, this is what, uh, what people wear when, when you're working in uh, 40 below weather. So zero degrees is uh, nothing for this. I could pretty much live all winter out here with nothing else but my my parka and my bibs. Got my snowshoes on today. We've had a lot of light snow, so kind of maintaining the trails nearby the house up here on the mountains in the Chugach, southeast of Anchorage. And uh, we're finally getting a little bit of snow. It's been super dry. Uh, all the rest of the country has been getting wild and crazy weather with big snows or ice storms. We've been pretty much dry, clear, and cold. Very little uh, precipitation. So finally, the snow gods have spoken and we're getting a little snow. I'm a ski race coach as well. I coach alpine ski racers and uh, we needed the snow badly. Uh, race season is on. We've been training hard on man-made snow and it's wonderful to finally get some, uh, some natural snow coming down. So those free skiing today will get a good powder day and uh, I've got races coming up pretty much from Wednesday all week. So I'll be training the athletes uh, on new snow and uh, Anyway, excited to see it. So, let me show you which Mora Eldris I decided to get. And I also got a few of them as gifts for people. I got the blue, this uh, nice blue colored Eldris. And, uh, and the ones that I gifted were basically what, uh, what was left in the batch that, uh, that I could find. Uh, so I found uh, one that was a red color that was appealing to me. I like bright colors that stand out in, uh, in the wilderness, on the rivers, in the woods, in coniferous rainforest, uh, hunting, um, up on the alpine uh, environment or subalpine environment, especially uh, during the berry season and, and uh, foliage changes where you've just got tons of different colors. So I like colors that stick out. In the winter also, I like colors that stick out so that I can find them, I can see them. It's uh, for two reasons. One, you don't lose them. And secondly, uh, a safety reason. Uh, and probably third, uh, other people see them and don't get hurt or don't misplace them as easily. So uh, I picked the Mora uh, Eldris in, uh, in the blue color here. They did not have any kind of uh, hot, you know, flame orange. They didn't have any super bright pink. And none of the day glow chartreuses, something that would look like a lure that I would fish salmon with, uh, they didn't have any, any nice bright colors. And I think that's actually uh, somewhat of a shortcoming with the, uh, more, the, the Eldris here from Mora. And that's no pun intended. That actually is a true shortcoming when you have a small knife and uh, it's not very visible. The red color is almost a blood color. It would blend perfectly in with, uh, uh, you know, many of the crowberries, the blueberries, the, the huckleberries, these kinds of berry bushes in the, in the, uh, rain, in the coniferous rainforest or the uh, subalpine or the alpine uh, tundra. Uh, that, that red, you'd, you'd lose it instantly. The green, same thing, that, uh, that sort of off, not real brilliant green, uh, soupy green color, that's 
that's going to get lost as well. It's going to be, you know, that soupy green is going to be lost in the soupy environment uh, in a hurry, getting around mosses and stuff like that. So, so the green, I think, was a real, that off green was a real mistake too, uh, as well as the yellow. That yellow is going to blend in with foliage. That, that uh, Those kinds of environments where you're going to use a knife like this, I think uh, Moore really got it wrong on the colors. So the closest that I could get out of a, uh, you know, out of all the different Elders packages that could stand out in the wilderness environment is uh, in this blue, and it's a pretty blue color. So let's take a look at the, uh, the knife itself. The knife itself is the 12 series of Sandvik. It is a, a very small blade. My thumb is about uh, an inch, so you can see that uh, we're talking uh, just a fraction over a two inch blade here. So we're looking at practical specs here, not down to the ounces and grams and perfect millimeters and measurements, but we're, we're looking basically at a, a couple of thumbprints is what you get for uh, actual knife. The knife features a Scandi grind here, and it also has a slight multi-grind bevel up near the tip, and that's reminiscent uh, of some of the knives that Mora has done in collaboration with Light My Fire. It is somewhat reminiscent of also the Mora 2000, however the bevel is a little bit different and I think functions a little bit differently. Um, so anyway, we have the basic Scandi grind all the way uh, uh, from basically what would be the ricasso of the knife uh, all the way um, up to the tip and then we have the secondary bevel uh, about an inch into it uh, from the handle and uh, so we have a nice slicing bevel essentially in the first forward inch towards the tip about halfway then we start with a shallow scandy grind and it's a fairly durable shallow scandy grind um, we also see that it is uh, swedged, just, or not swedged, but clipped just a little bit here. Not, not drastically, but just a little bit. I think that helps with the ergonomics, uh, penetration, and, and cutting to some degree. And we also have a very flat 90 degree, sharp 90 degree spine. So, uh, so that's very useful for scrapings and uh, you know, possibly you're using a fire steel with this. So the 90 degree spine is, is quite, quite nice there. And that 90 degree spine is going to go from the handle all the way to the tip. And uh, the other thing that you'll find that is slightly different from something like the Mora Garberg uh, in, the, in the newest outdoor segment series, you're going to see from the tip all the way to the handle that the blade is sharpened in that Scandi grind all the way, tip to the handle. The handle um, is, is, a, is a good, robust little handle. And, um, the, the, most of the knives in this category that you see tend to have uh, really poorly designed handles, but the Mora comes through with a very ergonomic, grippy uh, handle that works in a lot of nice, uh, nice, nice positions for your hand. Albeit is a little bit short, you're going to get a little better than a three finger, but essentially a three finger solid hold with your fourth hanging out a little bit. Um, you're not going to be choking up a whole lot on this, not necessary, it's a small knife. If you did though, you can actually get, uh, if you're taking advantage, for example, of the fine slicing features of that, uh, that extra bevel towards the tip, you can get a fourth finger on this. And I have a pretty decent sized hand, and uh, so people with smaller hands will even get a, a, probably a better purchase on it. But I have no problems, and one of the things that I have about my hand, I, since I row for a living, and uh, and also out of start gates over the years in, 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 in fitness uh, for ski racing, but it's primarily the rowing. This part of my hand is, in, is incredibly thick compared to most from pushing and pulling oars. So when, I, when a handle fits in my hand, um, I, I, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, the, uh, the handle does have a lanyard hole, so I suppose if you wanted a, a lanyard for that extra third finger, that would work nicely, and it wouldn't take much of a lanyard. It's not that you would need this for chopping, but it would be uh, a, an extra purchase with a, with a little light lanyard on the back without uh, taking away from the form function and you know, the, the nice compact features of this knife. So a little baby lanyard, you could have your finger right in there. So 
couple of the basics uh, on the knife. Um, this shares very similar, similar uh, shape as the Garberg, the Kansbull. Um, both of those are from the same uh, general outdoor uh, segment knives this year. This one's quite a bit shorter than the, the Garberg and the Kansbull. This is not a full tang knife. This is a partial tang knife and, uh, and a burly one at that. I don't think there's any issue with having this being a, a partial tang knife, particularly with a blade of this width and, uh, and, a, and a knife of this overall length. The, uh, one of the cool things that I do like about this uh, Elder's handle is that they have the, um, they have the hard plastic um, as far as the main frame of the handle, but they did some overmold, overmold with rubber. And so you can see in here this lighter portion of blue, that is going to be your hard plastic. And then the overmolding is around, uh, you know, uh, rounding out the features of the handle, and it's very, very comfortable. Uh, and, and your your handle purchase is 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 quite nice. Uh, it has a warm, grippy feel, which I think is important in a small knife like this. So let's go to the um, the way I purchased this knife was in its most simplistic uh, mode. You can certainly get them with the fire kits and uh, different things like that. So the way that this knife comes is in the thermoplastic sheath here. And uh, it goes in both ways, which is very cool. It's a no-brainer there. Uh, whether you're a righty or you're a lefty, um, whether you're doing it in a neck knife carry, upside down, right side up, a belt carry, same way. Uh, all the different carry methods. This is just a really nice feature and a no-brainer so you can stay on task to, uh, to have it going in this way. I will caution a lot of people um, on some of these new outdoor segment knives from Mora. That goes for the Garberg, Cansbowl, and this Eldris. When you put it in the thermoplastic sheath, you have to hear this click. I'll do that one more time so we can, we can hear that. You have to hear that click. If you don't hear that click, you do not have security in your sheath. Uh, what it's depending on is a friction uh, interface between the, the two thermoplastics, the handle and the sheath. If you don't hear this click, then you don't have the knife uh, securely fixed. Uh, when it's in this mode, it, is, it, it doesn't rattle at all with that rubber over molding um, and your interface between the plastics. It, it is actually a super nice purchase. No rattling, no nothing. So, uh, so I, really, I really like that feature. The, uh, the fire kits and all that, I just didn't see quite the purpose in going there. Some people might like that as a package. It'd make an excellent gift. It'd make a, uh, you know, an overall nice package for somebody as a first timer in a fire kit. Um, could compete very well with, uh, if, if the price point was better, it could compete very well with the uh, Swedish Fire Knife. Um, but the price point has, in some respects, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of been more favorable now towards the, the Eldris. And I think uh, basically this is uh, Mora's way to, to uh, really compete head-to-head -head with something like the uh, the collaboration between Light My Fire and Mora in, in this Eldris. So uh, I think this Eldris with a nice fire kit without having to stick something in the handle, uh, having uh, the ability to use different fire steels and whatnot, um, this is a direct head-to-head -head competition in the outdoor segment of Knives for Mora for the Light My Fire collaboration. Now I have the Garberg also and what's cool about the the uh, the new outdoor knives from Mora, that being the Garberg, the Kansbull, and the Elders, they share many of the same feature possibilities in terms of accessorizing with the different Mora accessories that are out there. So this is actually a, an accessory, just this part, not this part. This is an accessory. I'll peel that off so that, that to prevents confusion here. So this actually is for the when you uh, have your Mora and you've bought the multi-mount system, this is a way to pull it out of your multi-mount and affix it to your belt or a button on your uh, overalls or, or whatever. But what's cool is that it, it definitely uh, lends itself beautifully onto the Mora Eldris. And just like the knife going into the sheath, hearing that click, if you want security for the different accessories that Mora provides uh, throughout these new packages, you have to hear this as well. Yeah. 
So if you hear that nice click, you, you have a, 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 great, uh, a great little belt knife, great little uh, everyday carry type knife, something that you can affix to your pack. Uh, just just uh, creating a lot, a lot of different uh, possibilities for uh, availability when you're carrying. Now what I chose to do, and I, I've done this on my Mora 2000, is I've made a, a lanyard, and these are caribou antler buckles, or, or buttons that I've made. Uh, toggles, if you will. And they fit very nicely in this traditional Scandinavian approach. They fit very, very securely and nicely into that feature. And now I can wear that as a neck knife. And, as, and I can do, you know, I can hang some different things off here. I can, I can really secure this on a, on a lot of different things quickly with the Alaska bow tie. That's what we call that feature. And um, so, uh, so that, that makes a really nice neck knife if you, if you're doing that uh, um, or hanging it on something so that it's not on the ground after you're working in camp, hanging it in your tent during food prep, all, all those kinds of things. So. Anyway, uh, Mora Eldris, cool knife. Um, when I got it, I, I, was, uh, I was pretty impressed. I have a lot of knives in my collection, some great, some small, some awesome quality, some limited quality. But uh, this, this really um, is, is fitting into you know, kind of all those, 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 those favorable averages in that um, we're talking good steel. We're talking good stainless steel, so it has a lot of practical applications. And, uh, and all around use, uh, something that you're not going to have to babysit all the time. Uh, the handles, the handle material, excellent. Um, you know, nice warm grip, good friction, not so overly grippy that, uh, that I'm getting hot spots. Um, so you could, you could do, do work with this for long, long term if you, if you needed to. Um, it's just really, really a cool little package. Is it, is it the ideal carving knife? Definitely not. There are more uh, carving knives out there. Is it the ideal uh, all-around carry knife? In most applications, probably not. You'd probably go with a little bit larger knife. But in a, in a good, compact, all-purpose knife, uh, I think you'd, do, uh, you'd look long and hard to find something better at that particular price. So we're hitting, we're hitting that high value for what, you're, what dollars spent. You're hitting that uh, you know, super reliability from your materials and your steel and your handle materials. The, 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 the overall fit and workmanship is very, very good. It's a finished product. Um, and when I say finished product, it's a Swedish knife. What I mean by a finished product, it's well thought out, it's got a good design, and uh, there's nothing left out. The edge is sharp, the bevel is clean, the handle is perfectly fitted. I mean, all those kinds of things, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find uh, you know, better knives for this, this particular uh, use. So let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, and let me just say this too, that at first I asked a few questions out there to people that already had one and I, I, I pointed those questions as like why would you get a two inch knife and almost nobody had a great answer. I think they just thought hey this is a neat color it's a Mora I'll add one to the collection if the price is right and, and I, think I, I think I fit into that group a little bit too. The, it's, a, it's a neat little package. I knew it was gonna be good from, from Mora, and uh, I knew I was gonna get something reliable, probably something that was practical and that I'd like it. Um, and all those things are true, but I do think in terms of true use out here in the wilderness that it does serve a purpose. And that may go into a kit, that may go into a pocket, that may go into a pack. It could be excellent for river travel. It could be um, great for shore lunching along the river. Um, if you're not out there for very long during the day, it's not a self-reliance knife. It's not a, a true bushcrafter or a survival knife uh, or even a multitask camp knife. This is just something that, uh, and not necessarily something EDC either for everyday carry. Um, it's just a neat package, and I think uh, I think a lot of people will really appreciate and like this design. So let me talk about a couple of the blades that I think um, are important in the lineage of the Mora Eldris. OK, 
Okay, most important probably part of the, the lineage, I think, in the Mora Eldris, and that is going to be the in the Mora 2000. And what this was, was created uh, basically an all-around utility woods knife. Not a bushcrafter, um, it's not really a hunting knife, but it, it definitely overlaps those two. This is an outdoor segment knife. This is a partial tang, but what we're going to see here is we're going to see that same relationship that I talked about in the ability to put it either way into the sheath. I think that's very, very important, especially for here in Alaska, and particularly when you're trying to stay on task and focus. Bugs could be biting, rain could be coming down, daylight hours could be short. Um, you know, all those kind of features, you don't want to have to think about the symmetry of your sheath. So this is, this is where Mora really hit it out of the park with the 2000, and uh, in some respects better than uh, in the Bushcraft line. The uh, uh, they do also make this in a bright, bright orange. I sold that one in my raft shop to somebody because it was more applicable for going rafting. So uh, I kept the green one and pulled it off the shelf and kept it for myself. So uh, I like this as my ice fishing knife. Um, this is one I take almost all the time ice fishing. Just super applicable for out on the ice. It's warm in the hand. You have uh, the lineage that's important when you talk about the Eldris is the handle geometry, although the Eldris is shorter, it's very, very similar. We also have the rubber overmold in the Mora 2000. We have the, the rubber overmold uh, as well. Although it's different, it is a, a nice feature to have that warm, grippy feel around wet, cold, snow, whatever. Um, so so the, the handle, the general handle design and geometry definitely traces its lineage from the, the uh, Mora 2000. The, the beveling of the uh, blades, that I would say it does not really trace its lineage as much, although a little bit. Um, you know, we're definitely seeing a, a uh, nice, nice uh, uh, tip for uh, penetrating and finesse work. We're getting that in the Eldris as well. Where I really think, um, where I really think we're, we're talking uh, the lineage on the the blade design, however, is much more from the collaboration from Mora and Light My Fire. We're definitely seeing that tip design, although this is a higher blade than the Light My Fire, we're definitely seeing uh, an offspring here in the Eldris from the collaboration of light, with the Light My Fire. We're seeing the sh real shallow, shallow Scandi grind and the, uh, you know, the additional beveling at the tip for finer work. You can see why I, I think that this is in direct competition to this, um, in that if you pull this fire steel out, the handles are becoming more competitive in size. This is bigger and rounder, but now you know we're getting we're getting that same that same general feature of a, a smaller handle when we pull out the fire steel of the light my fire, and, uh, and we're getting 90 degree spines. We're getting that similar tip, and uh, you know we're not talking big batoning things, which in practical purposes I don't know why everybody keeps doing that batoning stuff. Um, in so many in so many ways that is such a waste of time um, I'm a I've been a fire bug since I was uh, stealing matches for as a kid so uh, I can tell you that I, I never batoned a single piece of wood uh, when I was a kid I broke it up with my hands and made made use of what I could find um, it's good skill to know but batoning is with a knife or an axe in so many cases is such a waste of time in the woods the woods will take care of you if you know what to look for so, uh, so anyway, that little rant said, um, this is in direct competition to the, to the Light My Fire. Okay, so competitive options, guys. Um, if I was to pick a, another small knife that would be just super applicable in terms of high value, compact carry, very good sheath and knife kit together. Um, you know, I, I think you'd look no further than the cold steel 
and this one is called the Cold Steel Mini Hunter. And this is in VG1. They certainly make it in uh, a better, uh, better steel now. I, uh, I think the value, oops, good snow there. The value is, however, still in the older VG1. VG1 is no slouch of a steel. The spine is not ultra, ultra sharp like the Elderus, but it's pretty sharp. And both are high carbon content stainless, so they're going to strike a fire rod. The ergonomics on the Cold Steel Mini Hunter, Pendleton Mini Hunter, is, is excellent. Its slicing ability actually is better than the Eldris. You do get a, a tad more blade length here with slight guarding, um, but it doesn't fill your hand quite as much. But these two knives, in terms of loadout, size, quality, features, um, these, this, this Cold Steel Mini Pendleton Hunter would be a very, very good competitive option. Um, and, uh, and we're talking maintenance free, high value, very good geometry, useful designs in the field if you were going to be carrying this in, uh, in, in similar applications, whether it be outside or, you know, everyday carry. Um, so that's, that's a competitive option. The, the cold steel comes in the Securex sheath. Um, you know, a, definitely a durable material. Is it my favorite uh, thermoplastic out there? No, because there's some glass filling in it, but glass filling does have its application. What you're getting here is a really sturdy sheath with a positive click fit, and you're getting a much more traditional yet better design than in the Mora Garberg and Canswell and Elders kits you're getting a more traditional snap and uh, so that's uh, you know that's a security edge that the cold steel in the secure X uh, gives you uh, you know on a on a lightweight practical carry knife kind of see here again we're looking at very very similar sheath sizes and overall sizes okay guys well battery is probably about spent on this at zero degrees and I'm gonna head back inside I hope you enjoyed if I left out anything please leave it in the comments and uh, you guys I hope uh, hope you're enjoying your winter talk to you soon hey guys I uh, wanted to show you one of the food prep segments here on the same day just so you can get a an idea of the elders in action on a piece of what we call mousseroni it is uh, moose sausage and uh, this is I think one of the more applicable uses uh, nobody's usually bringing fresh tomatoes out with them in the middle of winter um, you know some people will bring fresh fruit and fresh vegetables on trips obviously in the summer but in the winter time uh, you're usually going to have the fats and the proteins with you and uh, so let me just show you a couple of uh, slicing cuts here I'll, I'll start at the tip here we'll try thin That's tasty. And uh, also wanted to show you the competitive option. And that was uh, utilizing the Cold Steel Pendleton Mini Hunter. You can see why I call it a competitive option because it's a hunting knife and so uh, you're going to have better meat cutting capabilities just cleaner slicing they're both on the spines if anything the mini hunter is a little bit thicker but by design 
by blade geometry, what you find is uh, it's slicing through a little cleaner and a little easier. I'll bring two about the same shape, put them on end here. We'll go through the mini hunter, boom. And we'll go through the Eldris up at the tip here. Just a little bit more drag and friction with the Mora Eldris than the Cold Steel Pendleton Mini Hunter. So I wanted you to kind of see that um, in action today on a piece of moose sausage that you're probably going to haul out in the field with you. Mm, that's delicious. Another sort of food for thought here and this is a knife that I really enjoy for ice fishing and out of the outdoor segment of knives that Mora makes the Mora 2000 uh, in the kitchen scenario in the camp kitchen scenario is really quite nice so here's another piece of moose sausage and uh, just watch the ease of slicing on this I'll start at the tip boom 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 really quite uh, quite effective if we want the uh, smaller slices guys I'm trying not to eat this it's really <laughs> it's really tasty stuff but if we need the thinner slices starting up near this tip we can get some really very very consistent fine slices without mangling and and even in dicing scenarios this is where This is where the Mora 2000 really shines. And uh, just to show you, the Garberg in the same scenario, um, we already cut with the Eldris, but just to show you the Garberg in the same scenario, and this is bordering on a survival knife, you know, bushcraft slash survival knife, even though I'll call it a uh, all-around utility outdoor knife outside of chopping. But you can see it struggles with the friction. It squashes the the meat cut down. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's actually indenting and squashing before slicing. Whereas whereas on the Mora 2000. I'm just breaking right through and let's just take a a straight efficiency no cutting no seesawing with the knife with the uh, 2000 boom I'm through with the Garberg I'm I'm smashing the meat down a little bit in this process I'm smashing it down to make the cut and it's a mangly looking cut Let's watch the uh, 2000 again. I'll back off on the blade and make it a little bit more fair. So you can see why as a, a uh, an ice fishing knife on meat, I really like that. Even though we're cutting moose meat sausage, obviously a processed uh, wild game, we're getting that quick boom, boom, cut. Whereas on the Garberg, I'm smashing the meat down before I can get a cut. I'm kind of pancaking it. So you might want to consider that in the outdoor segment of knives, what your primary use is going to be. So I hope that's helpful, and I'm going to start eating moose sausage. Okay guys, and final segment from comparison, comparing these knives because they're, you know, you got to trace some lineage and purpose. This is the Light My Fire collaboration with Mora. This is the Eldris. And uh, I'm going to put my Eldris. Okay, so let's go with the Light My Fire and just see what kind of cuts we make. I'm pushing and I'm getting a little deforming to the meat. I'll do a, just a push, straight down push cut. 
and you can see I, I deformed the meat in that process. I'll do it again. See how it's squashing the meat on a push cut? It's not quite getting her done. Um, if I do a slicing, a nice slicing cut, and I'm up near the tip, I'm getting some nice function out of that. I've got plenty of blade length so I can drag that tip nicely through, forward and back. And uh, again, this is not a hunting knife. It's not necessarily a food prep knife, but I just want you to see the difference between the light my fire. We get that squashing effect. We must have a nice clean slice and even still, this is sharp as hell, but it's not getting as clean a slice on a piece of moose sausage, uh, some wild game meat that you're probably going to have in the field uh, with you for your fats and proteins in the winter. If we look at the uh, Eldris, let's do the same thing. We're going to compare spines. Very, very similar dimension on the spines. And we're going to do the same, the same cuts. I'm going to do a, a pushing down cut with the most efficient part of the knife I can. I'm getting that squash effect on the sausage again here on this mousseroni. And I just sort of pulverized it. Whereas if I get a, up on the end and I make a nice slice, there's a lot of drag here. Let's go to this other piece of meat. I'm going to do a nice clean forward and then back slice. Forward, I'm getting a little deformation, and back. I'm still getting a nice cut. Forward, back. Forward, back. If I'm looking at my meat slices this way, forward, sawing, now just back sawing. What, what the meat is doing is it's kind of twisting back and forth, back and forth with that added friction and thickness. And uh, you, if you had paid close attention to the Mora 2000, uh, there wasn't any of that. So, um, so anyway, keep that in mind that this is, a, this is another in the all-arounder master of nothing designs. It'll get the job done. It's going to be uh, very applicable to woodworking. Uh, you know, putting a putting a nice edge on something. You know, unbelievably effective for that. Hmm. And that's where the Scandi grind shines. But in that blade geometry, you're getting a very durable all-arounder. You're not getting something for camp craft in the kitchen you know, specifics to the kitchen. And if we look at the Light My Fire, it had the same, same issues as far as camp meat, uh, on processed meat. We had the same inefficiency, less effective sorts of issues. So I hope that made sense. And again, I'm going to eat another piece of moose sausage.